welcome to Composer's Play. My name is Scott Tobin. For the last 10 years, I've been composing music for video games, such as Project Reality, Squad, and Postscriptum. For a year now, I've been chatting to some of the best composers in the industry, and now you can hear their thoughts as we play through, discuss, and get a little nostalgic of some of the most memorable video game soundtracks. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Composer's Play. Uh, today I'm going to be playing Hexen, uh, and again, it's a really another special episode as I welcome back uh, the composer of Hexen, Kevin Schilder. Kevin, thank you so much for uh, joining me. Hey Scott, it's good to be back again, and uh, it's an honor to be asked back, and I'm looking forward to going over some Hexen stuff with you too. So. Oh man, it's, I've been looking forward to this for, for a long while. Um, awesome. So yeah, we're, we're, uh, before we get playing, um, I have uh, the uh, the winning hall um, session open here, and we're just gonna, I don't know, we're just gonna play play through and maybe pick out parts and have a listen, um, and then yeah, so I think we can kind of get started and have a listen to it. Mm -hmm. Sounds cool. good. So the first thing I remember, I went through your notes, and I think that the first thing uh, you said about this song was the first song that, or the only song that uses uh, uh, the horns, I, I think. <laughs> mm hmm I think that's right, yeah. Yeah. Well, I love the French horns. Um, they've got that kind of majestic sort of, um, I guess, you know, kind of like a medieval sound a little bit. I think of like uh, horns of war or, right. I don't know, something like that too. And they had, and, and for me, in this piece, it's kind of announcing the piece. It's like starting and announcing the whole game kind of thing. So it's a fanfare, I guess. Right, yeah, yeah. So I, yeah. I like that. I didn't want to overuse uh, any wind instruments, really, in, in either Heretic or Hexen for the most part. But yeah. that one was good. What, so why was that mm -hmm. then? What, what, the, the use of, th or not using horns? Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, you know what? I think mainly it was just that in in looking at the game as it developed and as we were working on it, so I always wanted things to feel kind of dark and menacing, kind of mm -hmm. like you know had a had a not angry or anything like that, but like a strong low feeling. And so mm -hmm. when I do when I bring in something like too much of a flute or even like high strings, um, you don't usually hear too much of that. Now, Hexen's going to be a little different than Heretic was, though, because something changed. Right. Um, but for the most part, I didn't really do these melodic lines in the wind instruments because of that, because they just sound a little too happy sometimes. Right. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep yeah. the dark and kind of yep. medieval and fantasy, like, yeah. Uh... Yes, the lowest strings and the timpani and um, big drums and things like that were always kind of what I leaned on for the most part. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I love. I mean, like the Heretic uh, soundtrack is is great, and then the Hexen soundtrack is also one of my favorites. And totally different. Like they just, they, I don't know. It just the Hexen one is more about the mood and less about the songs. I think. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, just I don't know. Like every every part of Hexen has a, has a mood, and it just yeah, it works really well. Mm -hmm. There's a definite reason for that. Oh, really? <laughs> I kind of, yeah. Um, I mean, I understand what you're saying. And then, then from my own memory, I look back through notes and things I had. And <clears throat> kind of what I remembered was, you know, we ended up with Ended Heretic in the end of 94, 1994. And we're like, okay, this is going good. We're, let's jump on to the sequel, Heretic 2. So that's what we were doing. It was H2 all the time. And I just went, okay, keep doing what you're doing. It was working. So I was making heretic music again in parts, little pieces, putting that all together, um, probably for months, just little chunks here and there. Mm -hmm. And then I looked in here in my notes and on in like me, um, I was like, okay, working. I wrote this down. I'm like working on new arrangements based on Romero's request to have all pieces be dark, not like heretic. Ooh. Oh, okay. Not, not fast and exciting. And then all the new arrangements I did, um, if you look at the files, if they have an R at the end, that was for Romero. Right. Um, those were, yeah, so I didn't even remember that. But those were the changes. And and that was a huge difference because I look at Heretic as being a kind of a, a, 
um, kind of copy of Doom's style, right? Which is mm. like kind of action, action oriented, uh, keep it plowing forward. And then getting to Heretic because these were bigger levels, longer levels, um, more complexity. And I think maybe they were starting to say, hey, this isn't Doom, it's a, it's a fantasy world. Fantasy has a different right. feel to it. Sure. And so they're like, let's roll back and start to put in things like slow down, uh, more feeling, emotion. Not everything has to be, you know, um, super fast and pounding. You're going to hear a lot less of that guitar that used to be yeah. a lot in Doom. That goes away. Um, and then it's sort of like the permission to like put, put quiet parts in, slow parts. Uh, pieces like that swamp piece, which are totally different than mm -hmm. something that would have been a heretic. Right. Um, so yeah, and like this one here, uh, Winnow is like, I think it's a piece that can stand pretty well just on its own as a song, which is what I why it's one of my favorites because mm -hmm. you can just play it. But it's so much longer. The pieces in Heretic were between one and two minutes. These right. <laughs> all the Hexen ones were between three and four minutes. So almost like a couple hours worth of additional music and you had all this time to develop. So this song <clears throat> isn't just one one idea going through, it's gonna change around a little bit. Um, and it had a little more time to develop those areas. So And it's cool because you're not hearing the same sections over and over and over. They kind of yeah. they blend <clears throat> seamlessly, so you don't really get tired of them. Um, <clears throat> which is which is really cool. Yeah, that's actually something I was I was just thinking about too, and I was glad for because it's like looking back on Her uh, Heretic songs now. I'm like, wow, those were so short. Some of those, I'm like, <laughs> how did we not just get sick of hearing that thing loop over again? Maybe we did, but when I can make a song that was <laughs> well, like, I didn't and anyway. <laughs> did you? Okay. <laughs> no, I did. I, I absolutely love. I mean, I could listen to them, you know, on loop for hours without without them annoying me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think in Hexen, some of the maps last a lot longer. Yeah, There's more that's secrets probably what it and was. things you could do. Mm -hmm. And then you've revisited them with that hub system and stuff too. So, mm -hmm. um, but like here, the piece is quieted down, just settled into something else, it gives your ears a little rest. And what's nice is when, even though this piece has a pretty strong fanfare and opening, by the time you come back around to the beginning, I don't feel like, oh, there it is again. It's like, I've been like lost in this piece of almost three or four minutes here and it doesn't feel repetitive so that was mm -hmm. something i feel good about yeah i think i think in any kind of i mean most video games now um it definitely it's a, it's a thing where try not to make it too busy uh like, like yeah it's shorter songs but lots of them lots of variation um so the player doesn't get tired of listening to the same thing over and over again mm -hmm. well that's i think a key to any well, to most game music, it's kind of like a movie soundtrack. That The music is back there in the background, mm -hmm. normally not to catch your attention, but to give you a mood, right. to enhance what you're, what you're seeing on the screen visually. So um, for the most part, a lot of this, the music I would do, if I did it right, you didn't um, kind of latch onto a melody and go, oh God, there it is again. You know, it just keeps going over, it's stuck right. in my head. Some of these songs, I can't even necessarily remember right away which one it is because um, try to keep them moving around in different directions so you didn't get like stuck on something that felt repetitive. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and, and the, the, so the strange thing is though, like playing through Heretic, um, I kind of like those short songs, those, those short repetitive songs, but that's because the gameplay in Heretic is way, way different from in Hexen, Hexen's, you know, it's longer, there's the hubs, you're, you're going back visiting the same level, so, um, mm -hmm. yeah, but, but Heretic, I know it's, cause it's so much, it's a lot quicker than Hexen, um, the actual gameplay is a lot quicker, and you're like, it's more like Doom in a sense, the original Doom, like. I agree, I think that's yeah. exactly it, because it was so much like that, and <clears throat> it was about, you know, kind of more of the run and gun thing. Right, um, right. And, it, and it made sense. We were just like sistering off of Doom and what sure. it did, and trying to trying to keep that s successful gameplay going. So, and then you step forward to Hexen, and you're like, okay, it's not Heretic. It's going to be something else. And you, I think anybody who makes games is always like, what can we do bigger, better? Um, that right. will surprise surprise people, and, and they'll be like, yeah, this is more awesome, you know. Right. Um, so 
the levels were bigger, the hub system came in, the idea that this was a, an adventure in different parts of worlds, it felt like more of an immersive like epic tale as opposed to like run and gun through a, a fantasy sort of designed world. Um, right. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. a heretic was like, what's this going to be? And I think that established an identity and even like a sort of a, a fable and a storyline behind it. And then um, it just kind of matured. That's kind of what it feels like. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. And it's like, you know, with, with Hexen, it's definitely one of the earliest games I can remember with that kind of RPG elements in a first person, like first person action game. And, you know, mm -hmm. the hub system and that. That was that was, mm -hmm. radi that was radical back then because most most of the games back then were quite linear, um, you know. I can't remember really any. I mean, that, this is ninety five, so you know, Doom was out two years. Doom two came out the year after, and they were all quite linear. But Hex kind of changed it up a good bit, I think. Uh definitely, definitely. Yeah. I can I can pretty well still remember the meetings and sitting in and hear you know hearing talk about this and the idea of how it was laid out and. And then the, the, the design had to incorporate it because I remember going and looking and playing again. You see how there's things like switches and pieces right. of texture, texture that look like metal or, or the fire or stuff. And you're like, oh, wow, everything is like designed well and linked in to bring these worlds together right. and, and, um, and, and you know, give you clues to how they fit together. So, yeah, yeah. we're going to see how well we do with that later on. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, so good. It's, it's such a good <laughs> game. Um, and of course, you know, Hex, Hex and 2 is another story. And that's that's equally as hard, uh, Hex and 2. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that one is like another leap and bound above what Hex and was, you know. And, and <laughs> different again because the, the, the technology had changed sure. uh, to the 3D stuff. And right. uh, so. Yeah. I like that spot right there in the song. Yeah, I love this part, yeah. Because I broke up the original theme thing with a little... It didn't go quite where it was supposed to, you know? Oh, really? Like at, measure, at measure 41, it would normally go right to 40. You know, you play that... Uh, at, you know, it's the, it's the opening again, but then I interrupted it with that little quiet interlude piece for like a couple measures. Yeah, that's cool. I, I, I think it's... Um, yeah, because it works, it works so well. Um... Mm -hmm. But I love there's there's certain really a lot of things I really like about this tune and um, and it's something that probably most people aren't aware of, is that the bass the the electric bass is like has this this rhythm that's just continuing like the whole way through the song but you don't really <laughs> notice it which is so cool uh, <laughs> but but it's so like you know it just has this like heartbeat kind of thing and of course you have the velocity so it's like oh, bum, yeah, bum, yeah. bum 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 Bum, bum, mm -hmm. bum, bum. And it's, it's, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. You look down below there and all, you know, all the changes in velocity. And I, I tried to take pride in that, like, not in a bad way, but like, um, you know, as a, as a wind musician myself, there's so much subtlety you put into pieces when you play and under the direction of your conductor and stuff. You don't just blast it out. Right. And so <laughs> every time I'm working with a computer here, I'm like, how do I get this thing? It doesn't do a lot of things for you naturally, so I picked that thing apart a lot of times just by hand. Uh, worked in the list editor and stuff, and I would just write in. The, I would do the numbers and type a lot of these things in, copy paste this stuff. Uh, but I always went back and listened to all these individual parts and said, "How is this bass sound by itself? Is it doing something interesting even by itself, mm -hmm. as well as putting it in with the rest of the parts?" So, um, yeah. and then mixing. Uh, mixing is an art. I mean, I'm not, you know, a genius at it, and I love how. Some people know how to do that very well, uh, but you can really be surprised at yourself by starting with this, an instrument very strong and then going, no, 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 and just dial it back, back, yeah. back, until, like you said, it's in there and you feel it, but you don't like latch onto it. Right. So. Yeah, and that's that's something I tell you know a lot of people when you know they're doing they're starting off with music and there's so much stuff going on in their in their arrangements, but I'm like, no, just dial it back, just start start taking stuff out. Um, and then mm -hmm. spread spread it, you know, spread it over a few different instruments. Don't don't put don't have a really busy um, area of you know a really busy part in your song. But um, that's 
great advice and that was yeah. the biggest first mistake i made when i started doing heretic stuff i'm like okay i'm gonna compose like crazy and uh <laughs> I, I i did i just over composed it i'm like wow i'm exhausted what did i do i got four measures done i'm like this is ridiculous play it back and it just sounded so crazy and full and i'm like this is no good i mean this is not what you're gonna want hearing in the background of a piece that goes loops over and over sure. so you're right i mean you have to choose choose your battles and choose your stars and your pieces not yeah. everybody should be in the forefront yeah exactly mm -hmm. oh, that's it but win oak is uh also to me a good characterization i think of the entire game um mm -hmm. it's a nice overture this is these are the instruments i loved in there the tim um the little strings and stuff the voices the vocal things in there yeah um i did those in the beginning, you, you hear those, um, uh, they're, they're like uh, bell sounds, and they're, they're, not, they're totally out of the rhythm of the piece. Um, right. Oh, the low, the low. Yeah. Where are they? Um, There's the timpani. Uh, let me have a look at the, uh, that's the drums. Could be there. Yeah, tubular bells. The tubular bells, right? And so when yeah. they play, they're really not—they're really not in time of the piece. They were more of a, you know, see, they're not on the beats. They were—it right. was more like it's more like this is a bell tolling in the map somewhere, maybe, but it's also in the ah. song. Oh, so that's yeah. what I did with those. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, like someone's actually like ringing it, but not not in time mm -hmm. of the song. Right. Yep. Is it an instrument? Is it a bell? There's a bell in the first map, right? So maybe that's right. what it was. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course you you hit the bell at yeah. the end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like a clock chime, you know. Yeah. Chiming something the hour. It's fun. That's I guess great. maybe to me it's like, oh wow, I guess I was putting a little bit more thought and creativity in the pieces as I went because now I had like six I had heretic under my belt, so I was a little bit more experienced and um thinking Okay, I know how to do what I did and everything, and now I can do more things with it. Right. So didn't have quite the same learning curve I did when I jumped in on Heretic. Sure, sure. Oh, wow. Yeah, but you know, both syntax work for each game. It's so it's like, you mm -hmm. know, it's, for me, it's it's you know, they, they both work great. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. yeah, and and so I was I was I noticed you know well obviously from playing the game from a long time ago. Uh, the, like this, I, I suppose you could call it like a motif. It's that, um, and actually the bass is doing it as well. It's like, um, it's playing yeah, G to F, and that and that goes through the whole song. It's and it's weird. It doesn't sound like it, it should. <laughs> Apart from the ending, of course, the the ending part uh, of of the song. There's a there's a cool little bass groove, but <clears throat> for the majority of the of the first parts, it's alternating uh, between you know G and F, doing that kind of m moving up a second. And it's cool, and I think that you've used that quite a lot in the in the soundtrack. That you know, well, and it, to, you're going. Can you play a part for it? I, sure. Oh, there. Okay. That 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 motif. I think you use it in. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's in actually. Is it Jack? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's, down it's kind of in that. It's kind of in that bomb bottom that rhythm thing too. That's in there. Right. Yeah, oh, there. there it is. There, it's an E here. But yeah, that second thing, and it's used like obviously it's used here as well. I'll tell you, I, I didn't consciously go to one piece to the next and go, oh, copy paste. That was good before. I always try to be creative and original. But then again, there are certain motifs, like you said, that just feel right, and they start yeah. to kind of characterize it, and they're a good. They either come in a little bit after once the other stuff is already in place and you're like well that that idea can fit right in here again right so. yeah i think it's uh, yeah, yeah i think it's cool it's, it's it's nice having that little those little um yeah those little motifs that kind of just sprinkle mm -hmm. throughout the soundtrack i think it's yeah it's really cool well um, it's it's the right thing to do i think you'd find it in a movie soundtrack mm -hmm. as well because you have this overture that states all the themes and things for you and then you keep returning to some of those in different forms and variations Right, right. <clears throat> yeah. It's not cheating. It's not cheating. No. It's yeah. <laughs> it's, it's 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 all it's all good. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's a lovely tune. It's a really nice opening song. It's de it's definitely one of my favorites. Um it, That's cool. Thank you. My, it, I 
had two probably that were my favorites. This is one of those. It wasn't actually originally going to be the first one. And um, the first one was going to be, hang on a second, um, Fortress or the Hippo Style. That was one I was first was going to do, and it just didn't seem to fit. So I said no. Switched around in the Winnow Hall. Oh, so, okay. That Fortress. Yeah. Originally, that was what I was going to use. Was it this one? <laughs> I'm playing for you now. You might get it in about five seconds. Yep. Yeah, it's cr it's pretty dark. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the right mood, but I think, you know, and then I made win on it. I'm like, no, this one is a, this is an opening. This is a beginning with fanfare and it's an overture to this, to the game. So it made a lot more sense. Right. Switch them around. Nothing wrong with this piece. But... No, it's great. It's, it's so dark. It actually, <laughs> yeah. it kind of reminds me of the, uh, the Stoic team from Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, know, you, know, you know the... the... <laughs> you know, like, it's kind those, of... Those, those, those kind of like quarter note... Dome, dome. Or there's one, there's mm -hmm. one piece, I can't think of what it is, but there's definitely one in Shawshank that has this kind of like... quarter note... You know, is it really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I have, I have to find it. Okay, but um, yeah, but uh, that's you know, not a soundtrack I listen to or anything. Right. So okay. I haven't heard that one, and, and I, you know, I, I, I never consciously. Well, there's a couple of things I noted to, to you as well that I thought like I had little inspirations that would help me and start a piece or whatever, but never any major uh copy stuff sections i never wanted to plagiarize anybody or anything like that but you know it's music you're eventually going to find something that's similar to sure. somebody else's ideas in some way yeah of course i actually remember you mm -hmm. telling me in the, in the in the heretic composers play that you didn't really listen to anything you were kind of you kind of just went no i'm just gonna go with my own my own instinct and yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i think that was that was kind of important if you're going to try to be original is to just kind of clear the space at least so that's why I would do it in the morning. Uh, I didn't listen to anything on the way to work in the in the car or anything. Keep the radio off. Whoa. Didn't talk to people. I just get in the room, sit in the closet, and um, just <laughs> yeah, it's so hilarious. Ign off. Ignore your family. <laughs> ignore your coworkers. Straight into your, your studio. <laughs> yeah, and I'd be like, I'm not coming out till noon, and um, and just be be in silence like that because it's the to me it's the empty. I guess. It, be interested in to talk to other composers and see where their ideas come from but for me it's the empty spaces that get filled you start with something and then you're waiting for the next part to sort of be heard in my head right and and if there's stuff in the way just people talking phone ringing all that it can just interrupt yeah well mm -hmm. that's something i should i should think mm -hmm. about doing because sometimes it's hard to to distance yourself away from other music and you know especially when you get like temp temps uh, soundtracks for for new games that i do and people send you you know soundtracks and you're, and you're like oh yeah i want it to sound like this and i'm like hmm i don't know um i'm like like can you give me maybe i'll just try something different than um but uh yeah but yeah usually usually i get it right but <laughs> well that's a good point but it can it depends on what you're trying to do right if if they say like hey we want you to do a, a variation of this idea here we like this this is you have to listen to that and right. work off of that idea um you know but I mean, it's, it's a good way to kind of get or if you're stuck if you get the writer's block that's what i used it for too i would but mm -hmm. i would listen to things that weren't really in the genre i was in so that's why i'm listening to like pop music 80s pop music or <laughs> movie soundtracks and weird right. stuff like that and it wasn't like here's a whole song i'm gonna you know work off of it'd be like three or four notes something that would just stick out to me and i'm like okay i gotta start i can work off of this wow yeah um, it's hard that's, to be original yeah there's there's so much mm -hmm. music there's so much music out there and especially now that we have we have such easy access yeah. to so much music um right and, and which... you you think to yourself how can i not be copying somebody right now with this right. music right really I, no one you know but, but yeah. we're all that's the cool thing about human beings every everything we create comes uniquely out of us like we are so unique so there's a good chance right. you're going to be very original um if you yeah. just kind of let your let yourself go yeah that's it that's absolutely yeah. it mm -hmm. but um yeah so 
back to back to winning uh, winning hall there um mm-hmm. yeah there's a few there's, a, there's some really nice things uh like i remember i i chatted to you about the cathedral piece um from heretic and how you used you know you, yeah. you, you liked writing um you know harmonies like counter harmonies in different different directions and like the the choir the choir part in in this song mm-hmm. is, is 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 definitely you know you can definitely hear it and i i just i love this little breakdown it's so it's so cool <laughs> same Yeah, a little syncop- syncopation in there. Um, some of this reminds me of going back. I probably was thinking a little bit about things I learned in composition, because even when you had an original line, you're like, learn things like, you know, don't move those lines too too much in parallel and copying each other. Sending them off in different directions is nice. Not mm. having them move on the same beats right. um, gives you the sense of motion and that kind of thing. Yeah, so, and and they are they're like kind of on the off beat. Yeah. Ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And it gives it really nice. It gives, you know, the movement's really nice. Yeah, because your ears keep moving back and forth between the low and the high. Yeah, between the two things like that. So yeah, and then there's that cool. There's a lot of in this song. There's a lot of chromatic um, kind of harmony too as well, which is I mean there as well. I think it's, well, it's really I think cool. that's part of creating good dissonance is you can't move in scale tones. You, you know, mm. you move in, in like dissonances of half tones and tritones and things like that that create that cl- little bit of a clash in your hearing yeah. uh, that you avoid. It, it gives it that dark feel and kind of you know. yeah, for sure. And it's and a lot of people, um, a lot of people can't <clears throat> you know they don't they don't like it because I remember I was watching I was watching some video on 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 Hex and some guy who was doing it and he was like, oh, I don't like the the music. It's too dissonant, and I'm like. I'm like, you know, and I'm here thinking, man, the music is is awesome, but and like the distance <laughs> makes the mood, like. Uh, but I think I think, <laughs> yeah, I mean, your compositions are quite they're quite out there, but in in a good way, they're quite dark. Um, you know, there's a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of you know, yeah, a lot of a lot dark kind of clashing uh, harmony, which is which is really cool. It's real dark, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm. Yeah, I respect the, anybody's opinion about it. I mean, at least he heard the right, he heard the right things. It's like, yeah, it's dissonant. But um, I think I think I kind of said this like in the heretic thing too. It's like I, I knew, you know, I had some conventional music training for composition, orchestration, all that. So I kind of knew what the rules were, and I played a lot of traditional music. So um, I kind of knew how harmonies that things were going to resolve. You kind of, it's it's all going to go here. And then I'd hear that. I'm like, well, that's kind of boring. So then um, <laughs> to me, scary music is about how the unexpected it's in visuals. Yeah. And it's also when the music or something turns a little bit and I can't, you know, it, it triggers something inside you when you use these kinds of little bit of clashes and, and things because yeah. it's ten, it's tension. And then, um, you know, the, the lack of tension is not noticeable until there's tension before it. Sure. So that you can resolve out of that and all that, but that's where you go. So I don't know, maybe that was something you liked. Yeah. Very conventional style of music. Well, well, that's it. I mean, I think he's a reviewer. He's a reviewer online, but you ah. know, I, I, you know, he's he's not like a he's not a music uh, dude. But like, you know, <laughs> I I I, re- I respect that. I I respect people that don't like complex music and you know, like that's that's you know that's why yeah. there's pop music and there's there's things like that. But you know, mm-hmm. when when it comes down to the to the dark and the the ominous and the you know the cluster dissonance that's that's where i just i love i i try to put up my own music as much as i can without 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 annoying anybody <laughs> but, you know <laughs> I, I, th- I think it's i think it's you know it's i think it's i think i think it's really cool to have nice harmonies and nice dissonance you know within within reason of course but like hexen's the perfect game to do because it's quite it's it is quite it's a dark medieval setting so um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I, I have, I've never tried this, but I have no doubt if like maybe took a, a hexen or some of my these music pieces and went to a university and gave it to like a music professor, they might go, "This is trash. This is all wrong. <laughs> this is this is not what you do. This is awful," or something like that. And maybe they would be, yeah. to, from their opinion. But but um, I think what I learned in having a chance to compose my own music is like, you know, they're your 
you don't get penalized or fined for breaking any rules. And That's it. a lot of this comes from from your hearing in your heart. I, I have my own theory that maybe that's the way music was always originally made. And then later on, they came back and looked and said, oh, look, there's there's rules we can attach to this cool music song. Sure, sure. Yeah. And it's so, like, yeah, so, you know, you're not getting graded. So it's like, yeah, you might as well, you might as well take it out a step or two. <laughs> yes. It's like yeah. food. You Pardon know, the pause. Listen to what you like. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly mm-hmm. it. But yeah. um, yeah, it's great. It's a, it's a great, it, I, I love this tune. It's such a, such a good tune. And yeah, there's more, you can see there's more of the mm-hmm. kind of chromatic harmony in the strings there, which is really cool. more more distance in the choirs i love hearing your analysis of some of these things and oh, really? it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be great to, uh, other if other people ever have those observations or something too uh, yes it, it helps me look at back and see what i was doing and, and some of the things i was thinking and i'm like wow i didn't realize that that's kind of in me or that's what i was <clears throat> achieving or whatever so and yeah. looking at a score like this is this is the right way to do it. You can see how everything lines up. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it's like you, I I know from when I'm writing stuff, I usually don't dissect it too much. I just do it, and then yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's there. And like you know, someone might point out to me like, oh, what's what's that doing? I'm like, I don't know. Actually, I've <laughs> you know, I've like at the time yeah. I was you know I was like, oh, I have to look back, and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I was doing some kind of you know some kind of jazz chord or something, or but yeah, it's it's um. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's cool breaking these these songs down. I haven't I haven't done yeah. it too much actually. I've, I've only done, I, I did one with Lee Jackson and um, yeah, I, I, but like, yeah, it's 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 cool to kind of break them down and and get in there and you know it, it, it might not be for everybody, but but definitely for people who are interested in music or interested in video game music and and how you know how how you kind of approached it back then. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I enjoyed your your conversation with uh, with Lee Jackson. It oh, was cool. interesting to hear his perspectives on his pieces and things too. And I think you know, that's <clears throat> I think the you know music is just a free thing. I mean, you can just slam your arm on the keyboard. Heck, a cat can walk across the keyboard like we know and make a little <laughs> music. The big thing is like if something's not working really well, you're then when the training comes in, go why is this bad? Why is this hurt? you know not working? It helps the training, the formal mm-hmm. training helps you go back and look at it then and say, oh, okay, you know this is <clears throat> the problem I'm creating and this is why it doesn't work. So yeah, but, but, yeah. but before that, I think for me, creating the music for these games was always about kind of coming from the heart and, and the and the just the inspiration, right? The muse. Yeah, hmm. yeah, that's great. It's so good, but it's um. Yeah, I mean, like you can tell that you kind of put your your heart and soul into it. It's it's definitely mm-hmm. I don't know, like Hexen isn't that well. Well, it's well known enough, but like it's definitely one of the games where I, I know with this including the music as well. It's just it's it's a, it's a, it's an amazing game. Like it's so good, and I don't know. I just mm-hmm. I come I come back to it every so often just to play it, just to you know to to soak mm-hmm. in the mood and ah, it's mm-hmm. great. Um, I love it. Like, I'm- I'm trying to be objective about it, but I had the same feeling coming back after a while, and I'm like, "Wow, this is really a good game." Just the yeah. whole thing, the way it's put together, and I felt really good about the music I did, and I did feel like, like if you're scanning across it right now, what you don't see is like a lot of loops. Like you can just look at the colors and the mm-hmm. shapes of the parts. You don't. I mean, some things repeat, but if I'm going to go for three or four minutes now, I didn't want it to just be like um, always the same thing happening. So a lot of yeah. effort. Yeah, you can good, tell. Man. Yeah, oh, it mm-hmm. did turn out great. There's there's a lot mm-hmm. of different sections in there, but mm-hmm. and it doesn't feel like there's too many sections in the song either. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's there and yeah, it stitched it stitched it all very well together. Uh, yeah. And cool. yeah, there, there's <laughs> the, the that bass line. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I love so, the bass. Oh, it's, it's great. Like, yeah. <laughs> I played bass guitar in a rock band for a while. It was like probably the coolest job I had. Oh man, <laughs> for, that's that's for, it. for a few years. So, um, yeah. so I treat it sometimes as a lead instrument in a way. Yeah, sometimes that's the first instrument I compose or, or put into there and just pick a, a bass line. Yeah, that's that's cool. It's definitely a shoulder esque uh, bass line. <laughs> that one, <laughs> if if, yeah. I could, if I could say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had, um, I've gone, 
oh, what did I see? Some YouTube videos. Uh, I can't remember the, the the guy's name, but he did um, he did some of the music and he played them on bass and guitar. Oh, and cool! Like, oh, I've seen them actually. Cow. Yeah, and I'm like, holy cow! I, I don't think I could have played those parts myself <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the bass because I'm like, wow, it was easier to write it with the keyboard and just put it into the DAW. But I'm like, wow. Whoa! Yeah, I, th I think I've seen those. Yeah, is the mm -hmm. guitar, on, the car, guitar and bass the same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great, really cool. That's so cool. Yeah. So I think I, I, do you have anything else to talk about or um, with this song, or do we will we get going in Hexham? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think that it's it's there. It's not like I look at it and go, oh, look at this amazing, innovative technique I used or did a thing here or whatever. Um, in the midi, in my MIDI arrangements, I think I'd use mostly a lot of conventional things to support it with, you know, expression settings and <clears throat> volumes and pans. Yeah, um, I can see and, that. You know, yeah, it's you know, it's worth looking through to see where did I do use a few things and controllers to try and shape the music a little bit because I always felt like I was trying to take computer instruments and make them sound more organic, like I was used to hearing. Mm -hmm. So if it, if it, if I could do it and if it was worth the time, then I would try to give those attention to details in there. And then there's always a lot of little bookkeeping things like making sure to set, do on offs and resets and things like that and volume things in there. So yeah, gotcha. Lots, lots of little, yeah. little, little, good bit of panning in, in this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I yeah, I kind of relearned my own MIDI just by going back over these and saying, "Oh yeah, this is what we had to do at times to make sure things restarted, shut off, all that stuff." Because uh, yeah. MIDI was a different animal to work with at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. the composition stuff above it is just strictly me. You know? Yeah, you know, you know the song "Orb." Yeah, this one. I did a little uh, remix for today. One well, remix, I pretty much didn't touch much much of it, um, and I. Made it into. Uh, I used all my in, uh, instrument libraries. Okay. Uh, yeah. Cool. So, it's I actually love this piece as well. It's it's really short. Uh -huh. I think it's played at the end of the game. Um, but it, this is your original one. Now this is the MIDI version. But yeah, I I, I love this little piece and it plays at the end of of Hexen. Mm hmm. Was that where the guy where he's sitting in the room at the end or something? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this. Oh yeah. This... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I changed it a little bit. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I was just messing around. I just I, I wanted to see if I could uh, do, you know, do something maybe. That. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I I love it, and you know what's great is like, it's still the song. It's all there, but it's like, <laughs> what are you gonna say? This is like the the upgrade, the the enhanced version of it. This is like maybe if we'd had had the ability to do it back then, it would have would it would have maybe actually sounded like. Yeah, you know? maybe. So I think th those kinds of um. Uh, remakes, I think, are really great because it still keeps the integrity of the, and idea of the song. Um, right, just kind of bring, brings it up to up to our, our time period now. So, yeah, yeah. I just I, as I as you know, I was doing I was messing around today, and I was like, oh, I you know, I really like the song. I wanted to see, and I only changed the slightly slightly little things in the strings, and I just wanted mm -hmm. to I put I put like a synth uh, a synth uh, bass underneath to give it even mm -hmm. make it even bigger because. I don't know. It's probably not, do you know what's probably not a good thing to do that because you know a lot of music now ha is is overly bassy and loud and yeah. But just just to, just to see what it would sound like with that. Oh, extra yeah, not at all. <laughs> you got the freedom to do whatever you want to do on the thing. Yeah. Um, I, I've heard remakes. I think the reason you did a good job is like you've listened to the music I've done and we talked about things a little bit, so you seem to kind of get where I was coming from and kind of keep that in mind. Um, cool. I've heard oh, I've heard some of the remakes and revisions or, or like the ports 
that went off to some of the different platforms. Oh, like, oh, right. man, this is, that's not it at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, like, I remember hearing some of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just was like, is that even the same piece? Just like the way some of the instrument um, samples and things came out. Or, wow. And that's how Restrictions, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So. <laughs> you, must be, you must be like, oh, man, what do you do to my music? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, I was always kind of used to it because back in the day with MIDI, you're like, oh, I don't know, what sound card do they have? Do they have like a Sound Blaster or a Turtle Beach or something where they can right. play that sound canvas? There were so oh, many yeah. things. We just, so many. I just knew that was going out. And we made FM versions, so I'm like, wow, they could be oh, hearing yeah. bleeps and boops on, oh, on the man. computer as well. It, it's so funny and you're so right because I, who was I talking to about this I think I was talking to Bobby Prince about you know or was it Lee Jackson I can't remember it was one that either maybe it's both of them actually about you know they write the songs using whatever they had and then it would go off to, you know it goes off to, to millions of people you know and every well not, not every system but most systems would, would play it back differently and you'd be getting all sorts of, you know, different sounds and, as you said, different versions <laughs> and variants and, you know, ad oh, yeah. and, oh, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you really had to have a thin skin about the, or a thick skin, I guess, to be to say about it. It's yeah. just like, you know what, I don't control this. This is what it was supposed to, <laughs> we would, it, you could at least say it was composed on a Soundbuster 16 or all 32 or something like that. And then people, right. okay, if I got one, I'll, it'll sound like the way they originally did it. Right. Uh, but until we were like, you know, recording on the CDs, you know, then it was just up for grabs. Even like other stuff was out of my hands too. Like, um, for Hexen, the the CD version, I think it was just, you know, I did everything, and I think they did it over at ID. I think they just, you know, basically ran it through a sound canvas and produced that oh, out there. Okay. But I didn't get to, I didn't do that. I didn't get to to do that. Oh, and really? then, and then you hear the the N sixty four version of the game, and I think Sega and stuff. But it's like ah, someone else did that. I I didn't get to even touch that. So I've heard. Wow. Good, I've heard good things in there, and other things are like this is not what I've done. What I would no have done. No way. So, I, I, yeah. Do you know what? I don't remember the N sixty four version of it. Yeah, I don't remember. Oh. I mean, I, yeah, I don't remember the music. I mean, I remember it came out on the N sixty four, but I had a, I had a PC, so. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I actually have a I have the N sixty four version here. I played it with my son years no back. No way. Oh, you were uh, saying which yeah. is fun. Mm -hmm. But then I, I went online, I think I was looking at YouTube or something, I was like looking for some versions of the songs, and there's an N64, I'm like, this, if this is it, this is uh, not good. Oh, wow. That's bad. Can, <laughs> can I, will I, will I, will I play a little bit of it? Or... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. This is Winnowing Hall. Whoa, it's much slower. Wow, that's totally different. Yeah, like what is that? Wow, that's it stopped playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, the tempo's off. The instrumentation is weird. Oh, it does that only have a certain amount of voices. That probably right. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> I've never, I've been, it's the first time I've heard it. Okay. Yeah, and there's the melody that's in there. Yeah, the melody's there at least. Mm-hmm. I don't, yeah, I don't know what the technical restrictions were as far as, like you said, maybe they were really um, tight, tight on how many instrument choice samples and things, whatever they were using at the time, so. Sure. Oh, well, let's go, I, I'll have to go, and, uh, <laughs> I'll have to go and have a listen to the full thing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And okay. I think, but I think there was like a Sega version as well, and that one sounded a lot better. Oh, didn't know that Sega. So yeah, well, oh, I appreciate yeah. that they were doing those ports and that they're out there because uh, you know a lot more people got to play the game on the different platforms. <clears throat> yeah, this is the Sega Saturn version. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's pretty much. It's pretty close, actually. It is. It's a nice drum set. It is a nice drum kit, actually. Yeah. Tambourine sounds awesome. Yeah, it's quite. It's actually. It sounds quicker. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely more faithful. No, I don't know if anybody's ever pointed this out, but one of the things I liked about all this music is is like this is like sort of like gothic horror kind of like dark music stuff, but there's like a drum set playing through it. Yeah. <laughs> and and I love the drum set stuff because it sort of turns it into kind of a like a rock pop song at the same time. Right. You know? And um which I loved. Yeah, it's, no one ever complained. <laughs> no, it's it, it's you know what? No. no one ever, no one complained and no one ever said anything. But yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's super like I don't know, it's cool. And it, and of course, Heretic <laughs> uses the, the the drum kit quite a bit. Yes, because you kind of would expect um mm-hmm. to like to hear like you know you ha- well, you do use timpanis anyway, but like you know tycos and you know timpanis and t- uh, mm-hmm. rototoms. But it's yeah, it's 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 really cool hearing. You know, yeah, a drum kit, which is which is you know the modern versus the old the older stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, it came from or I think originally from Doom. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I was following yeah. that in Heretic, and it just gives you the right energy uh, that you don't get with orchestral percussion. And uh, I guess you know, having been in a rock band and stuff too, I love <clears throat> I love drum sets and what you can do with them. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. No. Yeah, it you got to keep it driving along. Yeah. Rocking out. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cool, man. So yeah, we, yeah. we get going. Um, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. th- th- this has been really interesting, actually. Uh, yeah, hearing your mm-hmm. hearing your thoughts on that. That's really cool. Cool. All right. Yeah, I, I'm I'm happy to talk about it. It's kind of fun. Every once in a while, somebody will ask me a question. Like they'll hit my website and they'll be like, "What did you do this for? What's that?" And I just love <laughs> to kind of go back and hear what people noticed or said and that kind of thing. so. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's cool. It brings you brings you back. Yeah, thanks for doing this. Yeah, no, it's it's really it's thank <laughs> you, man. It's 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 really awesome. <laughs>